Hello and welcome back. I am Lord Ravenwark and this is uh me talking about something I just want to talk about without any gameplay going on. I'm allowed to do that, right? Well, whatever. I'm doing it anyways. So, right now, it's Creepy Month, a.k.a. October, and today is Halloween. And since it is the spookiest time of the year, I figured what better time to talk about one of my favorite things to do on my phone while taking an obscenely long 90-minute daily commute over county lines between my home and my university. Okay, well, my favorite thing to do during those is read webcomics. But my second favorite thing is far more in line with Creepy Month's creepy theming. Creepy pastas. Now, in case you've never heard of creepy pastas before, first of all, I find that someone hard to believe. But nevertheless, creepy pastas are essentially internet horror stories passed down on forums and other sites to disturb and frighten readers. That is according to the creepy pasta wiki, by the way. The name creepy pasta comes from the word copy pasta an internet slang term for a block of text that gets copied and pasted over and over again from website to website. Um, that sentence also comes from the Creepypasta wiki. I guess if you really want to learn more about Creepypastas, just go to the wiki. It's a pretty good wiki. Anyways, I love these things. They're dark, eerie, and can sometimes keep me up at night. The good ones can oftentimes read like a suspenseful thriller and can leave you on the edge of your seat in anticipation of learning just what happens next. And they've proven quite popular over the years too, with some of the particular popular ones getting comics live-action short films, video games, and even attempted human sacrifices based off of them. Seriously, that's happened. Hell, it actually fucking happened in the town I grew up in. Yeah, during my senior year of high school, two girls from a middle school in the same school district as me tried to stab one of their friends to death as a sacrifice to the Slender Man. Now, as a creepypasta aficionado myself, I can tell you just how idiotic something like that was. First of all, in the official lore, Slenderman has never accepted human sacrifices. Nor has he really killed children before. He just made them disappear. Presumably as an abduction, and always while they were still alive. So, murdering a child for him would seem to be counterintuitive to his goals. Then, of course, there's the fact that Slenderman is obviously fictitious. In fact, he was created as an entry in a contest to create a new folk legend with which to trick stupid people into thinking it is real. I guess it worked. It is worth noting that the victim did survive, but the whole incident did have an effect on me as both a fan of the medium and as a student in the same school district as the girls involved. I didn't actually know any of them personally, but people I knew did, and the whole school was abuzz with talk about the stabbing the next school day after it. At least those girls did end up getting the professional help they needed before someone actually died. But I digress. 
let's get to talking about some of the actual stories. One of my personal favorites is Psychosis by Matt Demersky. See, in most creepypastas, you have your protagonist, or possibly someone else, witnessing and recording some sort of creepy and or disturbing event. Unless it's a ritual creepypasta, which is its own subgenre. But in Psychosis, you have none of that. No creepy event, no monster attack, nothing that the protagonist witnesses with their own eyes. Just hints. Little bits and clues and evidence to suggest that something is not right. Enough for both him and the reader to worry that something horrible has happened and that there's some kind of conspiracy developing to deceive both him and you. But without any definitive proof that that inkling feeling in the back of your head is true. And you get to watch his sanity deteriorate right in front of you. What you get is a genius piece of psychological horror in which you can't even tell whether the protagonist was right all along or if he was simply just imagining it all. At least until the last two and a half paragraphs of the story in which they just come out and tell you exactly which one it was. Which, in my opinion, kind of ruins it because the enjoyment of the story is kind of derived from not knowing. But hey! Some good actually did come from that sucky ending in that it set up a series of awesome sequel pastas known as the Asylum series. Of course, like anything that anyone can create, not all creepypastas are quite so good. Hell, most of them are downright shit. During its golden age, Creepypasta Wiki was at its purest form of wiki, allowing anyone to post any kind of story they wanted to. This allowed countless amounts of pastas to make their way to prospective readers, which was a big plus for someone such as myself who'd like to spend hours at a time browsing for new scary stories. Unfortunately, as the popularity of creepypastas grew, this led to an oversaturation of the creepypasta catalog. Everyone just had to upload a story emulating their favorite pastas, and before long, most of the stories on the wiki were pretty low quality. It started to become a chore wading through all the shit to find the one golden turd buried underneath it all. And frankly, it started to get to the point where it wasn't really worth it anymore. So, in an attempt to restore the wiki to its former glory, the wiki's admins, around the end of 2013, started to revamp and enforce their quality standards. This was the start of a period I like to call the purge, because the admins went on a rampage and deleted any and all creepypastas which didn't meet their standards which numbered about 5,000 in total. Certain categories of creepypasta were met with particularly harsh scrutiny, and some of them have been banned from receiving new entries even to this day three years later. One category to be hit particularly hard by The Purge was the video game category, which was amongst the most popular and thus the most oversaturated categories on the wiki. Because of the sheer quantity of crap that had been there, the admins basically carpet-bombed it. Today, it has less than one-tenth the amount of stories it had just three years ago. So many creepypastas were deleted that many of them seemingly disappeared off the face of the internet altogether. Consider, if you will, Kill Switch, a creepypasta that I 
only know about because it was mentioned in an episode of Cat Icarus. Curious, I went to look it up, only to, to discover that, as a video game pasta, it had long since been removed from the wiki, which isn't really surprising. So, I tried to Google it, but all I find is some fan art, a rendition of the story in particularly bad mangled English, and this. Yeah, so large sections of the text are whited out. Obviously, you're supposed to highlight the text to read it. But, remember when I said that I read creepypastas typically on the bus? Well, that means I was using my phone to do this. Meaning the whole situation was a huge pain in the ass. But eventually, I succeeded and can finally start reading the story. Only to discover that this isn't Kill Switch. At this point, I feel my only option left to read this bitch is to look for its original wiki page with an internet archive. So I go to the Wayback Machine, guess what the URL was, and when I finally get to the story, I find that there was only ever one backup of the page saved, and it didn't even work right. But whatever, because the story is there and perfectly readable. In fact, here's the whole thing. My hard work having finally paid off, I finally get to read it. The story is about the eponymous video game Kill Switch. No, not that one. Yeah, that's it. Now, the details of the game aren't too important for us. If you're really curious, you can just read it yourself. But the thing about this game is that once you beat it, it permanently deletes itself, leaving behind no evidence of its existence aside from your confused memories of it. And the crazy part of the story is that the creepypasta itself mirrors the fictional game it's about. After some time in the limelight, it wound up deleted and evidence of its existence scoured from the internet so that the only way you can read it is on a broken backup from an internet archive. Although, actually, you know that website I showed you earlier? Well, it turns out Kill Switch is on there. It just doesn't show up on the URL with the word kill switch in it. No, you need to know to navigate through the site to find it. Doesn't question mark little p equals 11 just say kill switch way more than the word kill switch does? Anyways, kill switch itself actually wasn't that bad a pasta. Nothing spectacular, but certainly not worthy of deletion. It did have a weird ending, though. Anyways, I am Lord Ravenwork, this has been great, and I will see you all later. Bye!